Thank you so much, Pastor Desiree. While we're collecting chocolate eggs for outside, you can place an Easter flower in the church uh, in memory of a loved one. You can pick up forms. They look like this at the welcome desk uh, for details. Now, spring, of course, is just around the corner, so you can also sign up at the welcome desk to uh, keep our grounds looking great. The Garden of Hope and Faith Walk has impacted so many people. Some of them are in church this morning uh, today. Partner with us in this ministry. You will be gardening for the kingdom of God. Now, for uh, today's offering, we're switching things up. We won't be passing the plate, but rather are providing a basket for you to give your tithes and your offerings at the end of the service. We uh, so appreciate your faithful giving. And if you're watching online, please take a moment after the service to uh, donate through our webpage, centennialroad.com. Our website has a Give button that explains why we give and a pathway forward to donate online. Thanks for giving. Thanks for tuning in. Please be in prayer for our fellow Canadians suffering from COVID-19. This is especially problematic for the vulnerable, those who are elderly and people with respiratory challenges. I'd like to read a portion of an email from our own local board chairman, Kelly Wheeler. Just a portion. As a church, we exist in community. In fact, we are by definition community. And as a church, we also are God's hands. We step forward into crisis. We serve. We do not withdraw. We are people of faith, not people of fear. We need each other. And we owe duties of responsible behavior to at-risk congregants. We need to reconcile all these truths with the reality that for a season, we may not gather in person. So this week, uh, we're going to be working on protocols for what next Sunday might look like. We Going completely digital uh, might be a very viable option. We're going to explore that this week. So email, our website, and social media will be our friends to get the message out this week, whether through video clips or through newsletters. As you pray, please consider the vulnerable that you know. Give them a call. Offer to do their shopping for them. Serve them. You know, this crisis is an opportunity for the church to shine. Some of the vulnerable that you know, they may have internet, but not Facebook, or maybe not shortcuts to very helpful websites. Well, serve them. Coach them. Love them. Pray with them and for them. Encourage and dispel fear. Let us be vehicles of peace. Amen? Amen? We are in this Be Still sermon series. So let's do just that. Let us be still and know that he is our God. Rest in his presence online, right here in service, as our team continues to minister. Bless you, saints. And if you have any questions, come and see me at the Next Step station after service or email me, roger at centennialroad.com. What an incredible joy to greet all of you today. Everyone who's listening, watching on Facebook Live, all of you who are here uh, this morning, some of you remember the name Aaron Perry. And uh, Dr. Perry and I were tweeting back and forth this week a little bit and uh, we were just reminiscing uh, just a little bit, and we remember 11 years ago, uh, I said to Aaron, I said, well, we came in with HN, H1N1, and we're going out with Corona, and he tweeted back, he said, yeah, but we had a great run in between, so praise the Lord, so cool, and uh, so great to see all of you, and we're thankful to God for great leadership here at the church, at the board level. Pastor Roger has been a superstar, and uh, can we thank those guys, all of them? Uh, I want you to know that our new pastor, uh, Pastor Jason Frizzell, has been in constant communication with our board vice chair and with Pastor Roger. I'm serving in the DS role now, and I'm an advisor uh, to the team, and it's a joy to get the chance to present the Word of God uh, for each of us today, and uh, thank you 
just thank you for that opportunity. Uh, the word of God is powerful. And so we are so blessed to have this opportunity, whether you're at home, online, or whether you're right here, uh, we're grateful, grateful uh, to God today. So uh, the past 10 months in this new role that I've been uh, a part of, I've been traveling a whole lot more. And so I end up quite often going to the Ottawa airport. And uh, how many of you have flown out of Ottawa? Just raise up your hand. Okay, lots of you have flown out of Ottawa. So when you get there, uh, you go to Ottawa, and then they sit, you get your tickets all settled. Then you get in the security lines uh, to go through and be, um, you know, put through whatever x-ray machine they're putting you under when you're walking through. So I get there to the line most often, and then you just see there's one set of ropes. You go down and then another set of ropes, and there's all these people in line. Sometimes the lines are long, and you're like, oh, am I going to make the flight? Was I too late? Did I, did I get everything I needed? And you're kind of concerned, and you're in this long line, and you're just, you know, just, and you're looking. And then all of a sudden, I look up in front of me, in the long lines, all the people coming through the ropes, back and forth. I look in the long, and up ahead, there's this one little entrance, and this one guy up there with a the little desk, and these people just kind of, they just kind of walk right through, you know? I'm like, I want to go to there. I want to be one of those people. How do I become one of the people that are just waltzing right in, walking in? They've got instant access. What in the world is going on here? Why is this happening? Why do they get the reward of being able to just go forward and to go in? And then I found out the secret. It's this little card right here. This little card that I just got last week in the mail. There it is. Isn't that just quite a, like it looks, it looks like a prison break, doesn't it? Like that, that deal right there. My wife told me later, you, you realize you were allowed to smile. And I was like, I didn't know that. They were so serious when I was in there. So that's the deal. This little card. This is, this is like magic. You've got access. You get to, oh, no, leave that right up there for a minute. You know, let everybody, uh, you've got access with this thing. This is so special. And I made it my aim to become one of those people with special access. I wanted the reward. I wanted to be able to walk in. And now I'm a trusted traveler at a time when no one's going to the airport. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that amazing? No one's going there anyway. All right, you can take it down. Listen, do you realize that God, our Heavenly Father, has a secret rewards program that you get to access? There's a secret rewards program, and you're eligible Jesus had a follower named Matthew who used to work for the Jerusalem version of the Canada Revenue Agency. And he wrote down the process that he heard from Jesus, this secret rewards program, better than Air Miles, better than uh, Air Canada's version of Air Miles, whatever, you know, that is. Like, whatever it is, whatever the secret reward program is, better than the Tim Hortons rewards, for goodness sakes. He had this follower named Matthew he was a Canada Revenue agent for the city of Jerusalem, and he was becoming a follower of Jesus, and he wrote out the process. He heard Jesus say it in what's called the Sermon on the Mount, and Jesus presented this secret rewards program, and I want you to know about it. It's important. It's important in times of crisis. It's important in times that are where the waters are calm. Hear the word of the Lord this morning from Matthew chapter 6. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Last week, Pastor Justin launched this series. Um, it's called Be Still. He launched it with a message I will never forget. Busted lips and coffee grounds. If you have not seen that one, 
go to our Facebook page, go to our website, and watch that launch to this series, Busted Lips and Coffee Grounds. In that message, he talked about the concept of drawing away to be with God so that you wouldn't be just like the, those old coffee grounds on the bottom of the pot. You wouldn't just be you know, so exhausted all the time in your life so that you can live a filled up, powerful life in God. So go and listen to that message. I want to follow up that message by letting you know there are incredible rewards for following Jesus' advice concerning prayer. When I was a little boy, I was quite energetic, and I remember many times I'd come into a room, and my mother would be reading the Bible and praying. She may have been praying for sanity, three kids under the age of seven all at once, but I noticed As a little boy, she took time alone to pray. When I was a teenager, my youth pastor, his name was Pastor Dale. He is still the pastor at my home church. It makes me feel so young that my youth pastor is still the pastor at my home church. When I was a teenager, he taught us a concept called T-A-W-G, time alone with God. And it's really simple. Follow the words of Jesus from Matthew 6. When you pray, get alone with God. Talk to him. Simple conversation based on what's going on in your life. And when you do this, you open up access to God in a way that God is ready, willing, and able, more than able, to reward you. I want to offer you seven of the rewards Uh, today from scripture there are literally hundreds of ways that God rewards his people but these are seven from my life and they're backed up with Bible promises the whole way seven benefits of God's secret rewards program the first one is this the first reward you receive is you receive a secret identity If you have your outlines, you can just go ahead and follow along. You gain a secret identity. This is the psalm that I sent out to all of our district churches. We have 52 churches uh, from Montreal to Victoria, B.C. Most are concentrated here in eastern Ontario. But this is the psalm that I sent out to the district mailing list. Psalm 103 of David. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being, praise the Lord. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins, and listen, heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. As a follower of Jesus Christ, you're given a new identity. You belong to God. Peter was one of the disciples of Jesus. Many of you have heard of Peter. Jesus called him the rock. He was the rock before the rock ever hit the wrestling scene or Hollywood, right? There was a rock. Peter was the rock, and his confession of Christ was the foundation of the church. And this is what Peter wrote in his letter to churches that he was overseeing. He said in 1 Peter 2.9, But you, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. When you were baptized into Jesus Christ, you became more royal than the Queen of England. Folks, that's good royal blood running through your veins when you've been baptized in the name of Jesus. When Jesus was baptized, a voice from heaven declared, This is my Son whom I love. In him I am well pleased. God is well pleased with you. You are his Son You are his daughter. This is the reward of secret prayer. You know who you are. We know who we are today. Do you realize the name for church is the ecclesia? And the ecclesia 
means this. It means the called out people. We're called out people. We are called out into this mission field of the world of a needy, hurting, sin-filled world. We carry the name of Jesus. We're called out. We are different. We have a secret identity and we discover it and we rediscover it when we spend time alone with God. Number two, you get secret assignments. Romans 12, 2 says this, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Our children are currently in the season where they're making big decisions. They all feel big. They feel big when they're teenagers. They feel big when they're little, but they get to young adulthood and they begin to feel big. And you're like, oh, these, they're adulting now. They're starting to make these kinds of decisions. And I'm reminded that I've received guidance from God over and over and over because of taking the time to spend with God in secret prayer. Drawing away, closing the door, becoming alone with God, and praying. In the secret place, you pray secretly and receive a secret identity so you can take on secret assignments. Your overall assignment is to image the Son of God into a hurting world. God has made you and given you a mission to be fully you. So you're to be the best you that you can be filled up with God. And taking the best you filled with God, filled with the image of Jesus into the world and just being you with Jesus in you. That is your general assignment. You're filled up with the Holy Spirit who is forming you. That's why we're preaching a sermon series like this, Be Still in the Season of Lent, because this is a time of formation so that you can be formed to be like Jesus. So what's this look like? Well, this week, it looks like checking on neighbors and making sure the anxiety or the pattern of this world isn't the only thing that they're experiencing. The pattern of this world is, I mean, this is a crazy example, but it is uh, represented. I mean, that's the pattern of this world, right? Go buy up every bit you can get, right? Go buy it up. You know, this is the pattern of this world. Listen, folks. Listen. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If your neighbor needs toilet paper, just get them the toilet paper, right? Be willing to share, okay? Honestly, we are a called out people. We are called to be different But that's the pattern of this world. And folks, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to call the world crazy when it's crazy. Because there are some ways right now. There are just some ways the world's acting crazy. Okay? So don't be afraid to call out crazy. I mean, that's crazy, right? We know that. Your overall assignment. I did get a sideways look when I took that package out of the house last night, for sure. But I said, listen, praise God, we live in a forest. There are tons of leaves here. We're okay. We are all right. Your assignment is to be formed in Christ. And let that image go to everyone in your life. Number three, you get to hang out with secret service agents. Seven years ago, I was hitting a wall here at the church. I was strung out physically, emotionally, and spiritually. I was the lead preacher, lead singer, lead administrator, lead teacher, and lead representative of people running around like chickens with their heads cut off. That was me. The district superintendent at the time was a man named Don Hodgins, and Don Hodgins believed in me, and he believed in this congregation very much. He sent me to a church in Georgia for a training session, and I received some really good practical training, but honestly, it's one of those times when I don't remember any of the practical training. I still have the notes, but I don't remember any of the practical training, but I brought back one thing from that conference, just one thing. 
pastor of that church had suffered and struggled. He started the church and it took him 13 years before that church ever had more than 150 people on a Sunday. And now it's the largest Wesleyan church we've got. There's thousands and thousands and thousands meeting in North Atlanta every weekend. And he said one thing. He said, he said you have to have prayer partners. Now, I had had prayer partners in the past in, in a church plant that I had in other places in college. I had prayer partners all the way, but I didn't have, here at Sea Road, I didn't have a set of prayer partners. I didn't know who I should turn to in terms of who would want to be my prayer partner, even in, that, even in that time. And so I knew I needed them, and so at that conference in Atlanta, I just prayed, Lord, would you send me some prayer partners? Would you give them to me? And I just want to read another scripture just to set our minds on this because you need prayer partners, not just a pastor, not just a district superintendent. You need prayer partners because listen to Second Chronicles, especially in a season like this. Listen to what it says. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and listen and will heal their land. So I came home and I asked God to give me prayer partners. I was at a board meeting one night and I went to the, to the person that kind of God was drawing me to and I just said, uh, would you be willing to join me Maybe we just start out and we walk this building on a Sunday morning and we just begin to pray because one of the things the pastor said was that every week he would walk the building and he would pray for the building and he'd pray over the chairs and he'd pray over the church, not to pray over the building itself, but to pray over the people who would be coming in and the people online who would be hearing the messages. So I just said, would you be willing to do that? And he said, well, actually, I think the tears began to flow a little bit and said, absolutely. And so uh, God gave me three prayer partners, three men over these years. They are the Peter, James, and John of my life. Uh, Gord Smith's the Peter, and uh, then we've got the Sons of Thunder. We've got uh, Michael Smith and Ray Elliott as well. So I want to invite, I see Mike, I see Gord. You guys come on up here for a second and just talk about what it means to be a prayer partner. Uh, I'm not sure if Ray is here. He's coming next service probably. So come on up, and uh, I just want to ask you guys, we'll grab the mic here. And the Sons of Thunder both have Harleys, and so that's how you know when they come to prayer time and the Harleys are roaring. So Gore, just go ahead and share a word about it, and then I'll ask Mike to share about what it means to be a prayer partner. About, <clears throat> excuse me, about six years ago is when Pastor asked about joining his, his, him and his prayer partner. The tears came down my face because I felt so humble for one thing, so insufficient for another thing to fill those shoes. But when I got my voice back, I said, okay, I'd be happy to. Then I asked him when and what time it was going to be in the morning, of course, and he said, 6.30 to 8. And I have to admit, I took a gulp. <laughs> because since I retired, I really enjoy my bed in the morning. <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> we started. And I started with Pastor first. And then Ray Elliott came along. And then Mike Smith came along. And these have been the best years of my life because God has taught me and brought me a way that I never would have been brought through spiritually. It just, it's just a glorious, holy time to be touched of God, to be used of God, to, to be a, 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 just a, a pipeline that the Holy Spirit talks to you and others can hear on the other end of that because it's God. Amen. To be able to pray and another thing that I have learned is that <clears throat> when the Holy Spirit comes 
into your life in such a way that you know when it's taking over and it's praying. And I have learned that when he gives it back to me as well, that's a privilege and that's something I don't believe that I would have ever known. I feel the Holy Spirit on me right now Amen. because Amen. we're glorified. We're glorified in the Holy Spirit. The Lord. And you guys said today about be still and know that I am God. And one of the things that have stood out immensely with me is as I was praying, God said to me, be still and know that I am God. And a holy hush came over the four of us. We couldn't even hear the ductwork pinging because God was surrounding us with his holy power. Then I find out that that's when uh, Justin, uh, Jason was seeking our headhunter about a job. And that job is this church. Amen. And I had been praying hard. We all had been praying hard. The tears were flowing. There's hardly a Sunday went by, a Wednesday went by, that there weren't tears. And I'm the biggest ball baby of them all. <laughs> so I just want to say, for you people, if you can get in a group, please do it. Amen. Please do it, because you will never learn any better than being in a prayer, prayer group and having God speak to you in the way that he has spoken to me, my fellow brothers. And <clears throat> it's one thing to be a minister. It's another thing to be a man of God. And this man, beyond a shadow of a doubt, is a man of God. morning friends. Well I was a note taker. I had a prayer journal and it did go back as far as 2014. Actually I like the Pastor Eric also gave us another handle. He called us Radshack, Meshach and Abednego and I kind of <laughs> like that one. <laughs> so I was asked if I would come and join and pray for Pastor Eric on Wednesday mornings and uh, I had made a commitment that when I retired I would give more to the church and so the alarm clock would go off at 6 o'clock 20 after 6 right behind the, the sound booth there would be four chairs four men would show up and if we were ahead of Pastor Eric he would come in and we'd be sitting down and he'd always say don't get up, don't get up and we'd all get up and give him a hug and <laughs> so in Matthew 18 and 20 Jesus said for where two or three come together in my name, there I am in their midst. And this is exactly what we found week after week. It becomes a special time of unity and humility and vulnerability. Your family became our family. And your family became our family. Praise God. And we prayed for Carolyn and Courtney and Brady as they became towards marriage and for Jeremy and Samara and when you were sick we prayed for you and when Ray's wife was sick and when Gord's wife was sick and when my wife was struggling with health issues we prayed for one another in time there was honesty and trust and deep friendship developed and it was a very very safe place and now and again, we would be told what's said in the room this morning needs to stay in the room because it was that confidential. Just, have one more. Just one more page. <laughs> and so we became more confident and bold in our faith and in our prayers, request to God. And as we prayed together, we experienced tears, joy, peace, and at times heartache. And we found with our experiences, answers to prayer. And if I might just interject right now, we are praying for Pastor Jason. Praise the Lord. He has a house in Red Deer, Alberta that needs to be sold. Yeah. 
And with the oil industry going into a slump, he needs a miracle. And yeah. so would you join us yeah. in your prayer time? Pray for Jason and Bonnie for their home to be sold. So we would ask God to lead and guide us in the way that we should go. And that was from Psalm 32, verse 8. That's a, a verse that we claimed in our prayer time. And as Gord said, most mornings we experienced the sweet presence and the washing of the Holy Spirit right back in that corner as we would pray and feel God in our midst. So I just pray that uh, you would find this blessing as we have. Amen. 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 I don't have very much to say. Uh, they have said most of it, but it's, it, it, it is a fantastic time to come up here and, and pray for our pastor. And it's, uh, I don't know, it must be five years anyway that I've been here, maybe even longer, in praying for him. So, and I enjoy it. I, I love that time. It's, it's certainly wonderful. And if anybody else wants to do it, I'd, I'd suggest coming along. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, this message is hastening on. You've just met the Secret Service, so they're pretty cool. A few more things. We get secret answers. Hebrews 4.16, let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Folks, there's times of need, and you need Jesus in those times. We get secret provision. There's times when we just need God to provide. There's been times in this church when it's been the moments that we've had to look ahead and we've had to say, how can we do that ministry? How can we make that next step? And every time, we're praying, we're praying, we're praying. And I know you are a church of prayer, but if there are any of you who have never experienced the secret rewards of getting apart with God, I just want to invite you, try it. Try it, that time alone with God. Number six, secret power. Ephesians 6.10, this is my life verse. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. When you go into your secret place and pray in secret to your Father in heaven, you receive a reward of power. Right now, you need spiritual power. Every one of us needs God's power in this time. We need God's power in the face of fear and panic. You need power to understand that if you contract coronavirus in the midst of serving your neighbor, you've done the right thing. C.S. Lewis in 1948, when the atomic bomb was what was making the world fearful, he wrote uh, an essay called On Living in an Atomic Age. And I was on the Gospel Coalition website the other day, and uh, the presenter, the person who was presenting this, they said, just read through this C.S. Lewis deal and just replace uh, atomic bomb with the word coronavirus. So I did that. So I thought I would just read it for you and we can just read it what C.S. Lewis, one of our greatest Christian authors, had to say. This is what he said. In one way, we think a great deal too much of the coronavirus. How are we to live in an age of global pandemic? Lewis wrote, I am tempted to reply, why? As you would have lived in the 16th century when the plague visited London almost every year. Or as you would have lived in a Viking age when raiders from Scandinavia might uh, land and cut your throat at any night. Or indeed, as you're already living in an age of cancer, an age of syphilis, an age of paralysis, in the wartime, he said, in an age of air raids, an age of railway accidents, an age of motor accidents, in other words, do not let us begin by exaggerating the novelty of our situation. Believe me, dear sir or madam, you and all whom you love were already sentenced to death before the coronavirus was recognized. And quite a high percentage of us were going to die in unpleasant ways. We had indeed one very great advantage over our ancestors, anesthetics, but we have that still. 
it is perfectly ridiculous to go about whimpering and drawing long faces because the scientists have added one more chance of painful and premature death to a world which already bristled with such chances and in which death itself was not a chance at all but a certainty. This is the first point to be made and the first action to be taken is to pull ourselves together. If we are all going to be destroyed by a virus, let that virus, when it comes, find us doing sensible and human things. Praying, working, teaching, reading, listening to music, bathing the children, playing tennis, chatting to our friends over a pint and a game of darts. Not cloistered like frightened sheep and thinking about toilet paper and hand sanitizer. I added that one. Coronavirus may break our bodies, but it need not dominate our minds. Paul said this as well after in Ephesians 6, 18, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Last one, number seven, secret love. Matthew 5, Jesus said this, You've heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. That you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even the pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. He means perfect love. He means to love your neighbor, love your enemy, love one another. The greatest reward of all from getting alone with God, if you will get alone with God, the greatest reward is the love that he's going to put in your heart. It's the love that you're going to have. It's the love you're going to feel from God. It's the love you're going to spread. It's the love you're going to receive. You experience the love of God who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. And then you love those around you. You're even given the capacity to love those who are opposing you. There is no greater reward than love. And this is our gospel. This is our good news. We serve the risen Savior, the one who conquered death. There's nothing to be afraid of. So I want to invite you to stand with me for prayer, and I want to invite the team to come back. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, In this moment, if you want to experience secret rewards, if you want the rewards from God, two words from Jesus. He said, follow me. So be still and go into your room. Close the door. And pray in secret. And your heavenly Father will reward you. I'm going to lead us in a prayer just a moment but before I do I want to ask the team just to sing a verse and a chorus of that song I need thee every hour and then I'm going to pray for us and then Pastor Roger's going to come with a couple more announcements before our benediction you're going to go ahead and lead us again in that chorus Lord Jesus we are your secret agents Give us the ability to remember this week that we need time alone with you. And for any that are here today or any that are watching on Facebook Live who are wondering and who are fearful and who are needing hope today, I'm praying, Lord Jesus, that they would just follow those two words from Christ, follow me, follow me. 
Lord, we accept you as our Savior. We give you all the glory and all the honor. You are our God, and we will praise you. And all God's people said, Amen, Amen Pastor Roger.